What is happening guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today's match is definitely a weird, kind of interesting one. I figured I would upload it here because I thought it was kind of fun. As always, make sure to hit that like button if you are enjoying the videos here and make sure you subscribe to, uh, to make sure you don't miss any of these battle videos. I've been uh, trying to upload these as frequently as possible and I'm having a lot of fun with them. So anyway, opponent's team here is of course full of, you know, big threats. We've got Dragonite, there's Nido King over there is, is a threat to this team. Uh, there's, there's definitely, you know, some scary mods. Cloyster, I can't let any of these things set up on me. So I'm going to end up leading off with my Cradilly as they end up going with the Cloyster. Um, which is an interesting call. I guess they kind of expected Cradilly to be able to, to set up on. So, Cradil though comes out. Initially, I kind of just wanted to set up Stealth Rock with this thing because it is helpful uh, for Pokemon like the Dragonite and, and all that fun stuff. But, looking at my team, no one really wants to switch into this. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to go for a Giga Drain. If they lead Cloyster, they're probably also going to go for Shell Smash Turn 1. Which, I'm always against setting up Turn 1. Unless you know for sure your <laughs> Pokemon you're setting up with can you know, make the sweep happen. It's really never the ideal situation, but they go for the Shell Smash there. They are going to get that clean plus two in attack and speed. They also activate the White Herb here to get rid of the stat decreases, which is actually great because that tells me this thing is not Focus Sash. And now the Giga Drain is actually able to take care of this thing. He does not, Cradily does not give a shit if your defense was brought back to normal. He's still going to drain you. <laughs> that takes care of that thing. Uh, in comes Alakazam. Now, ordinarily, this is actually not too bad of a matchup because Cradilly on this team is definitely my special defense wall. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock while I can as he actually ends up going for the, the, the Focus Blast. Um, being specially defensive, I take that rather nicely. Obviously, I can't take two, which is unfortunate. Um, and I'm thinking Cradilly is actually still pretty useful for, the, for me in this matchup, so I kind of don't want to let this thing go down for essentially nothing. The only thing that kills Cradilly at this point is another Focus Blast, and we call that shit Focus Miss for a reason, because nobody's ever hit two in a row. So, I'm kind of considering staying in and going for a Rock Slide, um, but it's looking like I kind of want to conserve Cradilly potentially, and I also could just switch into uh, Mr. Maggie here on an incoming Focus Blast. So that's what I try to go for here. Um, freaking Alakazam in his, his, his pink shirt over here is just vibing, having a good time as Mr. Maggie comes in and says, hey, this is, looks like a fun time. Boom, nasty plot. And now it's no longer a fun time for <laughs> for Miss Maggie because, uh, you know, I'm actually Mr. Maggie. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to, you know. All right, but I'm just going to go for a Shadow Ball here. There's really nothing uh, at this point I can do. I've kind of got myself backed into a little bit of a corner here as, you know, Alakazam outspeeds everything. And with a nasty plot, there's like damn near nothing on the face of the planet that can take an attack from this thing other than a Blissey, but you, you know, you won't, you will not catch me using a Blissey. Um, anyway, my plan here is I know that Choice Scarf Typhlosion can definitely outspeed um, because of that Scarf, so I'm going to bring in the old Sausage as I just click Eruption here. It's going to be my highest base damage. If he's Focus Sash, which most, most Alakazams are because of their Magic Guard ability, they can switch in. Um, and kind of maintain that Focus Sash even when uh, there's hazards on the field. So I go for the Eruption there, it does knock it to its Sash. He then is able to go for a Psy Shock, and this thing's special attack at this point is like 9,000, and that is going to kill Typhlosion. That is a big bummer, it's always uh, it's always unfortunate to lose Mons uh, that you know could be helpful in the match, but you kind of got to allocate all the resources you can when there's a nasty plotted Alakazam across there. But now it's time to bring out the absolute legend, the Pokemon that everybody sleeps on competitively, which is Bibero. I'm able to then go for an Aqua Jet, got that priority, and takes care of the Alakazam. So all I needed to do was knock that thing to Sash. I knew I had the Bibero in the back. And we out here, boys. Now they're going to bring in Dragonite. And I'm thinking there's no way there's going to be another Pokemon to set up on me here. But actually, this is kind of ideal if they do decide to go for some Dragon Dances. If you're familiar with this big Chungus Turd Beaver, you know that uh, his ability Simple is able to double the effect of stat increases or decreases. So... They actually do end up going for a Dragon Dance, and uh, that's actually fine. Beaver is rubbing his hands together, ready to ready to make some shit happen. I go for a Curse here. It is going to give me essentially plus two attack, plus two defense, minus two speed. Um, but I think it's a, it's a nice setup move. Being able to get that defense bulk uh, definitely helps out. So I'm sitting actually plus one above this Dragonite. It's actually, it's obviously plus one, I'm plus two on defense. So it's going to go for a Dragon Claw here. I considered setting up even further. Um, but I figured I should probably start trying to get some damage off on this guy. And it actually turns out to be kind of all-out offensive Dragonite there as we see the Life Orb. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a Crunch, which does knock it to, I believe, range to where an Aqua Jet could kill. 
And if and if this works, potentially Bibero's looking great in the rest of this matchup. So I go for the Aqua Jet there. It does knock out the Dragonite. Honestly, everything there kind of worked out perfectly to be able to get that KO. I was able to get rid of its multi-scale because of the Stealth Rock. Um, and Aqua Jet was just in range to kill, which is amazing. Plus, Big Chungus is over here having a feast, eating some lefties, and I'm sitting at uh, half health, which I feel confident with. His best answer for Bibarel is going to be his for Alligator. He knows I can't kill this thing in one hit, but the thing is, I'm at plus two defense because of that curse, and unless this thing has any crazy tricks, it's going to be a little difficult for him to take out Bibarel. He figures he probably needs, you know, a little bit of help to be able to do it, so he goes for a Dragon Dance as well. So far, everything has set up on me. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, but... Uh, I go for the crunch there, and that gives me another turn of leftover recovery, which puts me back in the green. Chungus is an absolute thick monster at the moment, and all I have to do is essentially just live an attack here, get off another crunch. I'm thinking, do I Aqua Jet just to try to get some damage before I die? But I'm, I have faith in the beaver, boys, um, and I just am able to take a crunch nicely, <laughs> and um, one more crunch on my end is actually going to take care of the gator. So... You can set up all you want, but the barrel is going to eat your children no matter what the hell you do. I'm telling you. This guy over here, he may be plump and soft looking, but he really, he, this guy's a murderer. Anyway, now they're down to two Pokemon. It's Nidoking and the Blissey. Nidoking is the Pokemon that I was hoping was going to come in because now I can basically just flex my Aqua Jet again. They say my speed at this point is probably like 14, but I got that Aqua Jet. This guy moving quick as hell. He gets them, them chubby legs going, and Aqua Jet does actually take care of the Nidoking after plus two. And things are looking pretty good at this point in time. Um, eating some more leftovers. Still just having a damn picnic out here. The last Pokemon is going to be that Blissey, who gets absolutely obliterated uh, by a physical attack after plus two. So he brings in the Blissey. The barrel says, eggs for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, bitch. I don't care. I'll just eat it whenever. Um, unfortunately here, you'll notice that you actually don't get the chance because they are going to... They're just going to run. They know there's really no, re no need to... to to prolong the death any further. So that's going to be the end of that match, guys. Um, it's a little bit of a ridiculous match, but I figured I would upload it because I'm trying to upload as much as I can here. I know you guys are enjoying these battles. Um, I do actually find these matches from going with the code 2022-2021. Um, it's kind of the community-decided um, singles matchup code. You can always find somebody there. Um, but I also will be taking challenges over on my Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter, um, I do look for matches there for people that are kind of trying to play in specific tiers. So I'm not always getting matched up against people who are going to try to drag and dance a thousand times and just bring the most OP Pokemon to just to switch it up a little bit. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like button on the video if you enjoyed and uh, I will see you next time. Peace out.